The Tesla Model S was arguably the first large-scale production EV made, and it didn't come without its share of early design problems, one of them being a coolant leak that would enter into the chambers by the drive motor and the inverter. What you're about to see is a repair rather than a replacement of this critical part. There is a coolant seal inside the drive unit that during hard acceleration cannot handle the coolant pressure. What we're going to do is actually repair and replace that seal instead of changing the whole drive unit. Hey guys, Aaron McKenzie here, Gruber Motor Company. I'm here with Peter Gruber and we're gonna talk about some issues we're seeing um, with the drive unit today. Peter, so uh, can you tell me what, what, is a, what is the problem that we're dealing with right now? So the problem we're dealing with is the drive units, they can get coolant inside of them where they shouldn't normally be able to. There's a seal that this coolant is leaking past. And so what we wanna do is we want to figure out a way to find a stronger seal so we don't get coolant inside the motor because that can cause issues, electrical problems, isolation problems, um, and essentially keep the car from driving or even charging. Okay, what, uh, what caused this? So what likely caused this, um, inside the drive unit, what we've got is coolant running through it. And that coolant is cooling the stator and the rotor. Um, and one of the ways that they cool the rotor is they're running coolant right down through the middle of it. However, to be able to do that, they, they need all kinds of seals um, to build a mechanism like that. However, this seal has a known issue um, in which coolant can leak past it. And one of the ways we can tell is we can check around this motor encoder on the left-hand side of the unit, and if we find any coolant in there, that's a indicator to us that coolant has been leaking past it and filling up inside of the motor side of the drive unit. Can you tell me in general, what are the symptoms of this issue? So one of the ways you can tell if you've got this problem is one, you know, remove the, uh, the, the encoder, look for moisture in there, look for coolant actually in there. Um, you'll either see it building up to where when you pull out the plug, it will leak out, or you will just find droplets inside. The other way you can tell is if you have um, a low coolant fault that shows up, okay. but you don't see any pooling of coolant under the car or anywhere else around the car that's a pretty good indicator. The coolant's going somewhere, and in most cases, it's going into the drive unit. What are the, thing, what are the symptoms I would notice as a driver that, there's a, that this problem's starting to happen? So one of the issues you will see as a driver, as the issue itself progresses, is you get a breakdown um, between the high voltage and the ground or chassis in the car. And the way it does that is this entire case here is essentially grounded. Um, you've got a high voltage motor in between it and when that coolant essentially connects this case to the high voltage of the motor that's where you start to get a breakdown and what the car will do is it will do a couple different things you can get limp mode so you won't be able to drive as quick um, you'll get a little turtle icon um, in other cases the vehicle will not charge or drive and just simply state there's an issue oh wow okay so that it might just be a general alert like need service or something like that correct and it'll still let you drive in some cases Again, it will limit how fast you can drive or how much you can drive. Okay. And then of course, in your worst case, no driving or charging allowed. Okay, so here's the inverter out of the Model S. Um, you can see you've got three phases on here. And this is what we're going to repair. And so this is the part that this is the part that's susceptible to being um, compromised by the coolant leak. Is that right? Correct. And it's pretty easy to see because, you know, with all the cir the boards and everything on it, it doesn't look like it should really get wet, right? Correct. Okay. I can actually show you where it should be leaking in from the motor. So what it doesn't do is leak past these seals. As far as we can tell, these are well designed. There's nothing getting past here. Where it's getting past is once it starts to fill up the motor side, these three bus bars here are the three phases that go to your AC induction motor on the other side. Right around the bus bars is very likely where the coolant is leaking in. Once it fills up the motor enough, it will leak into this side and um, start to pool in here. And when you get enough of it pooling up, it will work its way up 
and start to wick up the cables and work its way to the electronics and boards. And that's when you start having issues. Do we see this in some of the flood damage uh, cars also? Does it, is, this, that, is that the same part that's susceptible to damage when, the flood, when they're underwater? Sometimes. Okay. So we, we've seen enough flood damage vehicles that we've only seen one of them actually full of water. Um, these don't typically fill up, uh, which is actually kind of nice. They're, they're fairly well sealed. Um, but yeah, we've only ever seen one flood damage car fill up and this thing must have filled up at least halfway with water. And it took a while to drain out all the water. And um, that's actually, I believe it is that unit right there. Okay, we have uh, the drive unit removed from the vehicle. Peter, can you give us an explanation of what parts are affected by this issue? And what oh. these parts are? Okay, so you've got the whole subframe here. You got your two half shafts, the uh, rotors and knuckles and everything suspension related on the sides. However, right smack dab in the middle as you would normally have in a vehicle would be your engine, but in this case, this is our motor. So our motor is split into three sections. You've got the actual motor itself here with the stator and rotor. Next, you have the transmission. And then on the other side of that, you have the inverter. So the inverter is where the high voltage will come in and go out back to the battery. And then that again was connected by the three phases in between the transmission here to connect and couple to the motor. And basically all the power coming out is going into the transmission and out to the wheels. There's our drive unit. This right here is the inverter. And this is what houses the electronics that are susceptible to the water damage that we just saw. All right, so the next step for this drive unit is we're going to get it pulled out of the cradle we're gonna get this shell off so we can get a look at the inverter and do the repairs that we need to to get this drive unit running again. So what's next? So we'll see you next um, once we've got the seals, the bearings and other parts we're going to replace in this unit. Um, if it is in fact a coolant leak internally, if not, we've got to repair the board or the inverter side. There's definitely a problem with that. It's causing all kinds of can issues. So I'll get you updated as soon as we know what's going on. So we're gonna take a deep dive into this issue guys. We're gonna show you how we repair these uh, complex electronics.